G'day. This is a video about how to make geoboards like the ones pictured. Geoboards can be made with a varying number of nails, but I have found that uh, 7x7 seven is the best pattern. It's an odd number, which gives you a central nail, and it's about the right size for exercises. So this is a set of instructions of how to make 32 geoboards and to make them cheaply. These instructions you can download as a PDF from my website, mathwithgeoboards.com. But I just want to go through everything here and explain it to make it clear. So here's a list of materials that you'll need. Number one. 15 millimeters thick medium density fiber board cut into 30 by 30 centimeter squares. For example, here are two such boards. Number two, an oil based wood lacquer to seal the wood. Number three, matte black vinyl sticker about five meters. Four, lead pencils, centimetre rulers and set squares. Number five, about 2,000 20 to 25 millimetre long brass nails. Number six, hammers, get as many as you can, about a dozen. And seven, rubber bands of different colours. Now I'll explain each one of those steps. Let's begin with the board. I use medium density fibre board, 15 millimetres thick. So here is the board, as you can see. Now in Thailand, where I'm based, this board is available in sheets of 2.4 metres by 1.2 metres. That's a very large sheet. But if you ask the wood merchant to cut the sheet for you into 30 by 30 metre squares, that will give you 32 boards. I've got a diagram here of roughly what I mean. And the wood merchant, maybe he can sand the edges for you as well. And what you take away from his wood yard would just be 32 boards. Number two, lacquer. Unfortunately, MDF board is affected by moisture and if the boards get water in them, they'll just swell and start to fall apart. So it's really necessary to seal the board. Now, if you get a good quality lacquer and give it a couple of coats, paying particular attention to the edges, that ought to do the trick. The one on the right has been painted and the one on the left has just been lacquered. They're 30 by 30. On the other side, you'll see, there are the nails. And they're, they're finished geoboards. Number three, the next thing to buy is some vinyl sticker. This comes in either rolls or sheets. You'll need about five meters. Now the rolls are 53 centimeters wide. So if the sticker were cut down the middle, that would give you a width of 26.5. And then if you cut it into lengths of 26.5, you'll get a square of sticker about the right size. Now the color of the sticker is quite important. I always use matte black. You need a dark color and something that does not reflect the light. Otherwise, the teacher will get reflection off the board, which makes it difficult to see what's on the board. So you could use a dark blue. I think black is best. So let's say you have about 40 pieces of sticker. 
cut to the right size. Now, before you put them on the geo board, you need to draw a grid on each of the stickers. Now, at this point, I usually get my students to help me. They often have the materials to do it, like the pencils, the set squares and the rulers, and they don't have any trouble drawing a grid on each piece of sticker. A square, each side is 24 centimetres, with a line at 0, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24. That's seven lines each way. This will give you a grid with 49 vertices and a nail goes at each vertex. Here are two pieces of sticker which have had the grid drawn on them in lead pencil. Note that when we uh, eventually put the sticker on the board, don't erase the grid. It's still useful to the students. So, after the grid has been drawn on the piece of sticker, you can take the sticker and put it on the board. You peel off the back and then stick it about in the middle of the board. It doesn't have to be exact, but as near as you can get to the middle is fine. And then smooth out all the edges, all the bubbles, so that it uh, gives a nice, flat, clean look on the board. Number five. Nails. Now you're ready to put the nails in. The help of your students at this point is also very handy. If you've got plenty of hammers, you need to put the board on a nice firm flat surface. Concrete surfaces are ideal. Now the choice of nails is important. I've used brass nails. They're available in Thailand only in one place, in Chinatown in Bangkok, where they sell them in bulk. You could also buy these kind of nails from a hardware store. That would be about the maximum length you would need because remember you're only knocking the nail halfway in. You'll need about 2,000 nails. The brass ones in particular tend to bend because brass is a soft metal. Uh, these would not bend as much, the steel ones. Why do I prefer brass? Because brass is softer to the touch and brass doesn't rust. So at this point, the geo boards are finished. But you'll need some rubber bands to, uh, to get them to function as geo boards. I suggest you buy one of these bulk packs. This one has predominantly brown rubber bands. I'd use the longer ones rather than the very short ones because you want it to, to be able to stretch the length of the geo board. I've got some red ones and green ones here but really I like to have as many colors as possible but I'm restricted to brown, green and red in what I can buy locally. But that's enough. Three colors is enough. And of course they break and so on, but you can, if you've got a bulk pack, you can just keep replacing them. Lastly, a few tips. When storing the geo boards for, you know, longer than a week or so, I would take the rubber bands off them because the rubber bands decay on the board more than they do off the board. 
when storing the geo boards, they don't take up too much space. 32 boards could be put in two st stacks of 16 carefully and then just throw a cloth over them. They'll be right. When it comes time to use them again, they might be a bit dusty, in which case a, just a soft hand brush does the job quickly and easily. Here's a brush I bought. You see there's, there are no rubber bands on the board, as I recommend. And then I can just easily take all the dust off like that. Geoboards are also transportable. I quite often carry them in the boot of a car. Try to stack them snugly so the nails on the front of one board don't scratch the back of another. If the sticker gets damaged, you can just use a black permanent marker to fix it and it's hardly noticeable. And sometimes the nails bend, particularly the brass ones, and they need to be straightened. Finally, I didn't cost any of this. But if you do everything yourself, you can make the geo boards for less than $2 a board. But if you get the help of the local technical college, the cost goes up considerably. But last time they painted the boards for me and gave two coats of lacquer. But I think all this is still very cheap considering the benefit you get from geo boards. All right, that's it. And if you've got any questions, you can contact me at my email address. I'll see you in the maths videos.